Hi, my name is Leroy Herring. We welcome you to uh, Emmaus Road podcast as we start a new little short series on our podcast. It won't be uh, very long. Maybe a little different than what uh, you have, have been accustomed to, especially at the beginning. But we hope you'll stay with us. And uh, if you catch the first one, maybe you'll be intrigued enough to finish out the series uh, with us. We really hope so. If you are watching this now, we encourage you to share this uh, podcast with your family, friends, anyone, as that also helps get uh, the word out to others that we are trying to convey. So, without uh, any other comments and so on, I want to talk to you uh, for a few minutes about free access to God, and I'm going to put that around uh, maybe the gospel recipe. Now, I hate to call it a recipe to a degree, but it does convey the thought because I don't want anyone to think that <clears throat> the recipe that I have to do this, 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 and this, or it's not going to turn out right. That is one way to look at a recipe. But we're going to look at a recipe in a total different light. So, like I say, I would like for you to uh, stay with us and, and continue with us throughout the the short series. If you look at me and, and my physique or lack of physique, I am someone that loves to eat. I love food. I love the enjoyment of a great meal. I remember when I was <clears throat> coming up, uh, my mother had a rule almost of the old meat and three. There was always meat uh, with a meal. There was always more than one or two vegetables. But at the end of a meal, without fail, there was always dessert, period. A meal in our household, which was not extravagant, which was not above average, uh, probably below average. My mother and father got married October the 29th. 1929, uh, which was right at the Depression. And they went through the Depression. So their mentality was not the frivolous thing, but to always have food to eat. When I think of my childhood, I think of getting off the bus, going to the house, and there was always, as I said, some type of dessert, whether it be mincemeat pie, whether it be uh, peanut butter candy with coconut in it, whether it be a 13-layer chocolate cake where the chocolate ice in between the layers was as thick as the layer of the cake, or in the fall it might be a, a Japanese fruit cake just a myriad of different things. But my favorite then <clears throat> and now was banana pudding. Now, when mother cooked banana pudding, obviously she cooked it with love, but it was the old fashioned manner and way and recipe of cooking banana pudding meaning a box of vanilla wafers. She would take a 9 by 13 glass pan, and then there would be an, another glass uh, bowl over here, something similar to what you would cook uh, meatloaf in. Uh, that was mine. The rest of the one was for the family. This one over here, that was mine. But she would spread... Vanilla wafers completely cover the bottom and the sides. 
she knew exactly how to cut the bananas, cut them in slices, even slices, place them all throughout the bottom on top of the vanilla wafers. They were, not only were the vanilla wafers touching each other, so were the bananas. So it wasn't just a banana in a banana pudding. It was full of bananas. She then made the pudding. Now, I'm not talking about opening up a box of powder and pour some water or milk in it. She made the pudding from scratch, meaning a double boiler. Uh, most women today or most cooks today do not even know what a double boiler is, but she cooked the pudding in a double boiler. Double boiler. Poured that over the bananas and wafers. Then made a meringue to go on top of it. You know, cream of tartar, uh, egg whites, sugar, whip it up. Spread that all over the top of the banana pudding, had little peaks on top. Put that in the oven and toast it where the top of the meringue would be brown and then there would be little droplets of sugar uh, on top of the meringue. Some people can visualize that. Some people know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, you go to a church dinner that you're going to have at Thanksgiving or Christmas or honor the pastor or whatever nowadays, and Somebody will bring a banana pudding. It will consist of a few vanilla wafers in the bottom, some bananas chopped up here and there, open up a package of instant pudding, pour over the top of it, spread Cool Whip on top of that, and bring it and call it a banana pudding. Now you go over to the table where the desserts are and you look at them and you call both of them a banana pudding. Anybody else would say, oh, there's two banana puddings over there. But one of them is real and authentic. The other one, the recipe has been totally changed for convenience, for ease, for speed, and even though you put both of them side by side and call them the same thing, obviously they are not the same. Even though they've got similar ingredients, in some cases primarily the same ingredients, but nowhere and know how do they taste the same or they made the same? Is the end results the same? That's the example I want to use in discussing the gospel, the gospel recipe. There has been so much change to the gospel of Jesus Christ from the early church to the modern church is that every century the recipe keeps changing and changing and changing and changing. And even though we call salvation by the same term, did you get saved or he got saved or we present the salvation, we present the gospel, the difference between the modern gospel that uses the quickie recipe versus the gospel that Paul proclaimed, that the Holy Spirit gave to Paul to proclaim to the early church, is as different as night and day, is as different as those two recipes that I just shared with you 
about the true, authentic banana pudding recipe and the modern <coughs> quick recipe for banana pudding.